What is up, everybody? Lines on Paper here. This is my review of Heroes Reborn, issue number one. Uh, before we get into all this, let me warn you that this is not a spoiler-free review. We are going to talk about this book a bit, but it is part one in a longer story, so there's not a lot of spoilers to be had. So, uh, that being said... My comic book, Malevolent Rising, issue number four, still funding at Indiegogo. Please go ahead and check that out. Now, on or through review. So, I've done three videos of the Avengers story leading up to Heroes Reborn. So, there was no way I could just pass this book up. So, I had to buy it. I read it. Uh, I sat it down. I sat and thought about it. I read it again and decided, uh, finally what my thoughts on the story was. So uh, before you get too far into this, I did pick up the Art Germ book or the Art Germ cover of this book just because I liked it. Full disclosure, now on to the review. So our story opens up with Robbie Reyes, a.k.a. the Ghost Rider, riding a bicycle rather than his car. We actually see his car uh, there partially covered up and it's on bricks, it's a wreck. So clearly, Robbie Reyes is not Ghost Rider in this world that we have been thrown into. And by thrown into, I mean thrown into. Uh, this world is something that they want us to feel like has been going since forever. And just like our narrator who's narrating the story, we are to feel as out of place stepping into it as he feels living in it. And as we move on to the next page, we see our narrator is Blade the Vampire Hunter, which we knew going into this from the promo uh, information. But uh, now we see it. We see the reelect Coulson uh, in the in the background because we he's president. We saw that in the solicits as well. Uh, and he does not have memory of this world. He still remembers the world as it is vis-a-vis as -vis the regular Marvel Universe. This is this world is foreign to him, and he seems to be the only one that remembers what the world was. And as far as you can tell, the, the biggest difference is there's no the Avengers never came to be, and that seems to be the catalyst of all this change. Uh, one other thing that he does speculate here in these first couple of pages is that he has not he's been here for an amount of time, doesn't really go into how long, but they establish he's been here for a while, and he has not sensed a vampire since he's been here, been able to find a vampire. Vampire. So uh, that might be just a throwaway or that might come into why he is the only one that remembers it. Uh, then it thrusts us right into this Doctor Doom fight sequence uh, where he's got the gem of Sidorak and he grabs it. He becomes Doctor Juggernaut. Waste of name. Why not Jugger Doom? Come on now, Marvel. What are we doing? So uh, and then the Squadron Supreme shows up and they start having a big fight and it's pretty much a superhero brawl after that versus the super the squadron supreme versus uh they're called the uh masters of doom which is the masters of evil spinoff which is a lot of the characters we saw promote uh the scarlet witch slash quicksilver girl uh we have the black skull which is red skull somehow with the venom symbiote and a couple of others uh, so they really do try to make you feel like this is a world that's existed for a while and that you are stepping into it and you are supposed to feel just as jarred by it as Blade feels narrating it. So if that makes any sense. So you don't get a lot of you don't get a lot of answers. There's not really any exposition to be had here. How Doom got the Gem of Sidorak, how Coulson became uh, president, even though we see Mephisto and all the solicits down there in the corner. So we have a pretty good idea uh, how the masters, how the masters of Doom were formed, um, how where the Squadron Supreme comes from. Uh, Doom does call uh, Hyperion at one point an alien menace. So that pretty much. You know, at least it seems like his history is somewhat intact. Um, and we do know that this world's going to spawn a bunch of crossovers where we're going to kind of see what the other characters in the Marvel Universe have become in this new world. Here's Alpha Flight. Uh, that was one of the ones we saw when we did the uh, live reaction to the, um, the original announcement of this storyline. So this page, I actually had to take a picture of this with my phone. One, to prove I actually buy the floppies of the books that I review. But also, look what is happening. Dr. Juggernaut grabs Hyperion by the throat, you know, assuming he's going to try to choke him out. And how does Hyperion escape? You can even read the word bubble here. Impossible. You flexed your super muscles in your neck and broke my hand. That is something that happens in this comic book. Hyperion breaks Dr. Do mixed with the Juggernaut's hand by flexing his neck muscles. 
Wow. I had to share. I read that. I, I had to read it a couple of times to make sure this is something that's happening and I wasn't just suffering a psychotic break. And I, I had to share that with you. So uh, what are my thoughts on this comic? Uh, it's a bit of a mess. It's kind of a wreck, I think. Um, it. I understand that they are trying to throw us into a story and make us feel like we are just as much a stranger in this world as the narrator. I understand that. But um, they really give us no information. And my fear is, while I understand that for first issue, my fear is I hope they're not planning all the exposition that I'm going to need to understand this in the tie-in issues. I really don't plan on buying the tie-in issues. Uh, I believe this is an eight-issue series. And so I'll probably pick up the eight issues, and that's going to be it. Now, uh, beyond that, uh, we do see a few of the other Marvel characters in here. We see Carol Danvers flying a plane for a hot minute. We do see Tony Stark, who appears to have never, he's, since he never you know, got the shrapnel in his heart, he's never become Iron Man. He's just basically kind of the warmonger uh, arms dealer that he would have become, having never kind of turned to the heroic side. Thor is just kind of a drunk out in the out in Scandinavia who has no memory of who he is and Captain America is still frozen in the ice. So presumably the premise of the story is Blade is going to somehow bring the Avengers back together, reborn, if you will, and they're going to have to figure out how to put this world back. So um, I'm kind of torn on this. I'm kind of torn on what to think of this. On one hand, I... I think it, it was a little cheesy, but it's kind of cheesy in, in the good way, kind of like a classic comic book cheese. D Doom getting his hand broken by super neck muscles being flexed, that kind of cheese. I have to appreciate that on some level. So while it's cheesy, I know it's cheesy and cringe as I'm reading it, but I enjoy it. Um, also, this is the kind of comic book, you know, as someone who reviews and reads and, and tries to produce comic books, that I like to see because there's... As far as I, I know we're early on and maybe this will change, but there's no pretentious pretentiousness here. There's no there's nothing here but a good old fashioned comic book event. Something has changed the world. Our heroes are off and need to rediscover themselves. Something resembling the villains have taken over and something isn't right. And we have Blade here as our guide who's going to put this back together. I still think he is an odd choice for that role. Um, it just seems odd that Blade is this big in a huge line-wide Marvel event to me. Uh, it, 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 he seems out of place. But, you know... Um, Maybe they, they explain with the one vampire or that there's no other vampire. She's the only one. It sounds like there's going to be a reason for it. Uh, and I can understand that. I just think he's an odd choice because he always feels kind of detached from the Marvel Universe. Uh, he doesn't ever. He feels kind of like Punisher. Punisher always feels detached to the Marvel Universe to me because you figure a, a powerful enough super villain would have taken him out by now. Uh, Blade kind of same thing. He operates in his own little world. And so whenever he plays a, a bigger part of the Marvel Universe as a whole, he just kind of seems out of place. He seems weird standing next to the Avengers, you know, them and all their bright colored costumes and everything else. And then him just kind of in his overcoat with a sword. So uh, that being said, I can I, I suppose I could recommend this comic if you I mean, Ed McGuinness's artwork is solid. It's really cool. It's very kinetic, a lot of action. And this really this whole book is just a superhero brawl. Uh, it's Squadron Supreme versus the Masters of Doom for all but maybe four pages. So check that out. The covers are nice. Um, it's definitely, you know, my thought of my thoughts on the Avenger story that led up to this. That was an absolute train wreck. So it's too early for me to put past judgment on what I think of this. Uh, the story's left me confused, but I think it meant to. So I guess that's okay. Uh, the action was good. And, and I feel like at its heart, it wants to be something good that it's, it's the heart behind the effort is wanting to put out a good, enjoyable, fun comic book ride. Whether or not it's executed properly mm, or executed well, I should say, that's where it kind of starts to waffle. A lot of the elements are just too soon to tell. The things that do come together come together well. The artwork is nice. The pacing is just really breakneck fast, which is makes it a really fast read, um, which is good. So, yeah, we'll see. I'll stick with it. I'll probably uh, just give her a big fat review when this is over, unless there's some big milestones or something that we need to talk to. But here's board number one. If you're a fan of big comic book events, pick it up. If you are not a big fan of big 
big burly events. Something tells me that this story is going to get resolved, blow over, and have not really a lot of impact in the future. That's kind, and I'm not saying that to denigrate the story. I'm saying that because that's kind of how these alternate content, alternate timeline stories tend to go. So, uh, hey, thanks for hanging around this entire video with me. Um, please hit like and subscribe on your way out if you could. It's a, a big favor to me. helps me out. And I want to hear in the comments below if you read this book, what you thought of it. Uh, did you think it was good? Did you like the Avengers Phoenix nonsense that led up to this story? Um, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think of Blade as the narrator, if he seems out of place to you guys, or if you think he is right at home in his element, or maybe they've expanded him and you like that expansion for the character. You want to see more Blade operate in the regular universe. Discuss all that stuff with me down below in the comments. Why there? Hit like and subscribe, and thanks again. I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.